We see valuations remaining fairly stable through 2018. And I think, you know, many would suggest that the market is at its absolute peak, but we've been saying that for quite a while and the market continues to peak. So really, we're in a position where we're trying to squeeze more juice out of the lemon. Um, eventually, we're going to run out of juice. And I think at this point, uh, we're pretty close to there. I think it's always tough to predict where, where markets are going. I think there's a lot of external factors, whether it be interest rates, whether it be geopolitical uh, concerns. I think generally, I, I see the market being relatively flat with uh, more of a flight to quality. Um, where we are in the cycle, there used to be a typical real estate cycle when I got involved and it was kind of a seven year cycle. To me, Vancouver doesn't really fit that cycle and I'm, I'm also not sure that, that the, the models that worked before necessarily are the, same, are the same models going forward. So it seems to me we're fairly late in the cycle, but it, it may be that this is, a very long, this is a very long cycle. From a valuation standpoint, I mean, it's, it's challenging to predict. Everybody's felt like cap rates have peaked for the last 10 years in a row and they continue to go down. I, it does feel like we're at, um, at peak valuations right now, especially in the face of, of, of potentially rising interest rates again and uh, the end of this year and, and going into 2019. That said, great quality assets will always command a premium price. Uh, Vancouver is viewed by a number of international investors as a global city and there will be transactions that will still drive the market and valuations further higher. So it, it's difficult to say, but in the aggregate, in the face of rising interest rates, it feels, it feels like things are starting to peak. Um, in terms of, oh, in terms of where, in terms, in terms of where we're at within the cycle, uh, it, it, to, to compare it to a baseball game, we're, we're in the later innings of, of the cycle. Uh, you, if you take a look at retail, just about every major enclosed shopping center has either undergone a, a, a redevelopment or expansion or is about to enter into it. If you look at the office market, there's eight new office buildings that are either in pre-leasing, pre-development or development right now, which is, which is you know, probably the greatest amount of development we've seen on the office side in two decades. And when you take a look at where the uh, vacancy rates are on the residential side, at all time lows of below 1%, it, it, it feels like there's a lot of fatigue within the marketplace. Where it is in the cycle is harder to answer. Where, where we see market valuations going, uh, and you mean housing valuations? Or for housing, you know, if we're looking at average pricing, we may see it come off a bit. We're not seeing the trades of houses, particularly on the higher end going forward as, as quickly or as rapidly or in as many numbers and volume as we did in years past. But if we start looking at the median pricing uh, of housing in the, in, in the market, we think that we're going to continue to see that have some upward pressure. 45 to 50,000 people moving in every year, our lack of ability as an industry to build, to, to build at the pace that we need to to meet demand means that housing uh, is going to face, at least in the shorter term, an imbalance between supply and demand, which will certainly keep pricing where it is, if not moderately increase it over the year.